I'm Ashley Vansant, publisher of the Washington Daily News. I want to welcome you tonight to Beaufort County Community College and welcome you to the Beaufort County Candidate Forum. Uh, tonight's event is sponsored by the Washington Daily News and organized by the Bo Washington Beaufort County Chamber of Commerce. I want to thank uh, Beaufort County Community College and Dr. Luke for allowing us to hold the, the event here at this venue tonight. And I want to thank each of you for showing up to participate in this forum. I also want to thank our candidates for office, uh, making a commitment to represent Beaufort County citizens in public office is, is no small task. That's a, it's a tremendous responsibility, and it's one that, that each of these candidates here has committed to. We want to thank each and every one of them for making that commitment tonight, and look forward to hearing from each of them as they talk a little bit about why they feel they'd be a good fit for public office. I also want to thank the Chamber of Commerce, particularly the staff there, uh, helping organize this event. It wouldn't be possible without them. And then Kelly Hopkins from the Board of Elections, our moderator tonight, also want to thank Kelly uh, for helping us do this event. So I'm now going to turn it over uh, to Pam Pippen, who's going to uh, offer a few comments on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce. Good evening. I'm Pam Pippen, Chair of the Washington Beaufort County Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors and owner of Pippen Resource Group. Thank you for coming tonight to the 2022 Candidate Forum presented by the Washington Daily News and the Washington Beaufort County Chamber of Commerce. We are glad to be back in person tonight to hold this forum this year. The mission of the Washington Beaufort County Chamber of Commerce is to be the voice of business. We hold this candidate forum because the elected officials that represent our state and county will be the ones making decisions that affect our local businesses and our community. A special thank you to the candidates that are participating tonight, as well as Kelly Hopkins for being our moderator. Now a little about Kelly Hopkins. Kelly Harris Hopkins began her career in 1998 and has been a director of elections for Beaufort County for over 20 years. She was certified as a North Carolina Elections Administrator in 2001. Kelly received her bachelor's degree from East Carolina University with a double major in philosophy and psychology. Kelly lives in Bellhaven with her husband Josh and three children, Morgan, Katie, and Harrison. Thank you again, Kelly, for agreeing to be our moderator this year. Okay, good evening. Um, first, we're going to go over a little bit of housekeeping, and um, I want to take a moment to go over the format. Um, the format will be divided into four segments. Segments will include North Carolina House of Representatives, Senate, uh, District 79, Board of Education, County Commissioner, and Sheriff. State Representative Keith Kidwell will be, will be given two minutes to make a statement since he's running unopposed. Following Representative Kidwell, uh, the format will be used, the following format will be used for the remaining segments of the forum tonight. Each candidate will have a two minute opening statement. After the opening statement, candidates will be asked two random questions and each will be allowed up to two minutes to answer. Our timer will indicate when the candidate's time has reached one minute and 30 seconds by raising a yellow card. And the timer will raise a red card when, card when your time has expired. No candidate has received questions prior to the forum, and hopefully the candidates won't have any questions, but if you do when you start your segment, you can let me know. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and call the school board candidates to the stage to have a seat over here. And you can use this, these steps over here. Um, Representative Kidwell is speaking first, so we'll have you take the podium first. And so as soon as we hear from Representative Kidwell, we will start our section on school board candidates. And then once school board candidates are over, we'll have a brief minute to change out segments. So Mr. Kidwell, when you're ready, you have your two minutes. Thank you, Kelly, I appreciate it. Thank you everybody for coming out this evening. As Kelly said, my name's Keith Kidwell, currently representing Beaufort and Craven counties. Upon re-election, I will represent Pamlico, Beaufort, Hyatt, and Dare. 
A uh, little bit about who I am. First, Chamber of Commerce. I did win the award in North Carolina for cham from the Chamber of Commerce for my work in, in uh, getting jobs into our area. I've also been awarded by NFIB, four times winner of the Civitas Award, NC Freedom Award, for a perfect score for all four years that I've been serving for conservatism. A um, bunch of other awards, let's just say I'm up there doing what you sent me to do. As you consider these candidates here this evening, <clears throat> I want you to look at who they are. I want you to look, do they represent your values? I want you to look if their organization represents your values. If they belong to an organization that took God out of their party platform, you'll want to consider that. If they belong to an organization who works toward abortion, not to stop abortion, I want you to consider that. If, they work, if they're in an organization that believes defunding police is the right thing to do, please consider that. It's very important that you understand there's two things to look at, the candidate and the organization they belong to. If their organization's core values do not match yours, I'd recommend you vote for a candidate that their core values do match yours. And in order to do that, they should belong to the proper organization. Think about that, weigh that in your minds, because if their core values don't match yours, you're not going to get the government that you want. According to Benjamin Franklin, every people get the government they deserve. Be very careful in your selection. This is a very critical election for the outcome of Beaufort County, of North Carolina, and the United States of America. My name is Keith Kidwell. I am your Republican candidate. I'm sorry, I'm your only candidate for the North Carolina General Assembly. Thank you very much for coming out this evening. Okay, we'll now move to our school board um, segment of the forum. There are four candidates that will be represented tonight. We have three of them here with us. Uh, candidates were allowed to submit a written statement if they were unable to be here. We do have one for school board and one for commissioner, which we'll get to a little bit later. So I'm going to start off with um, reading the written comment from ECP, who is a director school board candidate for District 2, which includes Aurora, Edward, Blunts Creek, parts of Chocowinity, and Gilead. And this is directly from ECP. I am seeking re-election to the Beaufort County Board of Education as a representative for District 2. I have served as a school board member for 28 years since 1994. During my tenure, District 2 and all of Beaufort County schools has been at the forefront of my care. Specific to District 2, Snowden Elementary has grown academically with meeting or exceeding growth on the North Carolina accountability model for the last five consecutive years. Southside High School has also met or exceeded growth on the North Carolina accountability model for the last three years. Chocowinity Primary has met or exceeded growth for the last five consecutive years as well. Snowden Elementary School, Southside High School, Chocowinity Primary School, and Chocowinity Middle School all have strong principal and assistant principal leadership as well as excellent professional educators and staff who desire and work toward great outcomes for all students. I held the position of school board member with great in integrity. I often visit our schools, speak with employees and students, and connect with our community and families directly at the school and community events. It is with great pleasure that I work on behalf of our community, including with the constituency who have elected and re-elected me to this position. It is my priority to ensure that your voices and vision for public school education is heard, acknowledged, and respected. If re-elected, I will continue to work with the Beaufort County Board of Education, superintendent, and our local and state legislators to lobby for our students and community. Over the years, I have fought to maintain St Snowden Elementary School in the Aurora community. If re-elected, I will continue to fight against opposing beliefs and entities that desire to consolidate and or close Snowden Elementary School. The school is beloved by the Aurora Richland Township community and remains an integral part of revitalizing this community through providing all students a high quality education. Please re-elect me, ECP, to represent District 2 on the Beaufort County Board of Education. 
So now we will move to our in-person candidates. And since we are on District 2, which again is the Edward Aurora Blunts Creek Precincts plus parts of Chakawinity and Gilead, we will move to our second candidate, Mr. Charles Hicks, for a two-minute opening statement. Hickman, I'm sorry. You know I know better. <laughs> you know I know better. So Mr. Charles Hickman, District 2 candidate for Beaufort County Board of Education. Thank you. Um, I am Charles Hickman, and I humbly ask for your vote on the, uh, for the school board. I'm running because proficiency scores for the students of Beaufort County schools badly need improvement. Not only do I believe my background gives me strong qualifications for this position, but I am one who will speak up strongly to push for those improvements in our schools. I am a Beaufort County native and graduated from Chocolate High School and East Carolina University, where I earned degrees in history and geography. I'm a U.S. Army veteran. I served as an intelligence analyst and a member of the Nuclear Emergency Action Team. I co-authored and taught the Nuclear Surety Certification course. Returning to civilian life, I worked as a teacher in Beaufort County Schools, teaching U.S. history and world history. In the private sector, I have created and run several small businesses, including movies and mercantile. I have been active in church most of my life. I believe I am uniquely qualified for this position, especially for the crucial times we are now living in. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hickman. We'll move to our District 8 candidates, which is um, Hunters Bridge Precinct, Surrey Bath Precinct, and parts of Pantigo and Woodard's Pond. Um, Mr. Donald Shreve. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I would, tonight I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce and the Daily News for hosting the candidate forum. Uh, my name is Donna Shreve and I'm running for Bath District 8 Board of Education. My beautiful wife Alexandra and I have been married 39 years and we have a daughter Lauren who lives in living with her husband. I'm a Christian conservative and believe in the importance of physical responsibility. Just a little about my background. I live in Bath. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology. I retired from two major airlines, Piedmont Airlines and U.S. Airways in 1995. I served 10 years as a CEO of a Center for Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Victims, where I uh, wrote grants. When I got to the center, our, our, our center when I got there, our budget was $167,000. When I left, we were right at a million dollars. So I went out and found the money to sustain that center. While I was there, I, we also were credited for building a state-of-the-art safe house. I, I've also served as a sworn probation and parole officer for the state of North Carolina Department of Adult Corrections. I retired from there in 2013. That was a difficult job, but we enjoyed it. We felt that we made a difference in a, in a lot of lives. Uh, I've been a substitute teacher for eight and a half years. Um, I currently substitute at two of our District 8 schools, and I believe that gives me a unique opportunity to be a board member and what those schools' needs are from day to day. I also won the Republican primary in May. I won the Volunteer of the Year for North Carolina in 2000. I also won the J.C. Penney Volunteer of the Year the same year with a Golden Rule Award, and they were they gave me a thousand dollars for that. Thank you so much. And our next candidate, District Eight, Mr. John McCalla. Well, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be anywhere at my age. <laughs> I'm an independent candidate. I've self-financed my campaign. The reason for this is that I'm not beholden to anyone save the electorate, and that's who I'm going to work for, the people that elect me. I have no political ambitions. 
I never run for office. I don't plan to run for any office after this at 82. <clears throat> I, I don't want any prestige. I don't need it. I'm not involved because I need notoriety, nor do I need the money. As a matter of fact, when I filed for candidacy, I didn't know that school board members were paid. Imagine that. How stupid am I? If elected, after reimbursing my campaign expenses, I plan to donate at least my first year's salary to the arts programs in the county. Successive donations will depend on the success of the initial donation. I want to put my money where my mouth is. <clears throat> so this is not about me. Rather, this is about the things that benefit children. Children in this country are in peril. They are bombarded by concepts that they cannot understand and cannot fight against. The intellectual corruption and evil perpetrated on them is criminal and a stain on our society. They are being subjected to the politics of hate, and we don't want that to happen in Beaufort County. What we need is more local control over what takes place in our classrooms. We do not need the data people, you know, the bureaucrats and politicians from afar, telling us and our superintendent and our teachers what to teach, how to teach it, and why to teach it, and bribing us to do it. To them, children are only members. There are means to an end. The hierarchy of top-down control must cease. Uh -huh. And local, I'm out of time. Minutes, That's, all right. <laughs> That's all right. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. We're going to move to the question portion of the segment. And we're going to start the question with Mr. Donald Shreve and then go back to Mr. John LaCava and then Mr. Charles Hickman. And the first question for Board of Education candidates is, what is the school board's role in safety and security? What's the school board's role in safety and security? I believe that uh, for start, based on the fact that what's going on in our country, there should be a school assessment immediately done. I'm being told that that assessment is being held until the sheriff's race. I think that is not a good policy to follow. I think with what's going on across the country, that school assessment needs to be made now, immediately. I've, um, I've uh, proposed the possibility of adding an extra armed security. I would prefer an SRO, uh, but um, allied to, um, uh, to secure each school. Uh, I've spoken with the operations, uh, Vice President of Operations with Allied Security, and he agreed, but he did say that he thought it would be a good idea to at least have an extra security person at some of our high, higher demand schools. So, um, also I think the, um, that should be done. The door should be kept locked at all times. Um, I think that they should have practice drills uh, for an active shooter, a lot of a lot of schools around the country is having that, and I think that we should have it here, and we shouldn't wait until an incident should happen. So I think I have some ideas if I get elected to the board that uh, I would want to work with a fellow board members and try to accomplish some of these things. I've been a hard worker all my life and uh, a good communicator, and I feel like we could do that. But I think that assessment needs to be done now, not in three weeks from now. You never know. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shreve and Mr. John LaCava. And I'll read the question again. What is the school board's role in safety and security? The school board's role in safety and security. <clears throat> well, if it were up to me, I'd make sure that some of my teachers had a concealed carry permit and carried in the classroom. I think that uh, if we put some signs on the entrances to some of these schools saying, quote, <clears throat> our teachers are armed and certified, good luck. That might prevent some of this stuff. As it is, people think the, these, these uh, weird twisted, twist, these twisted people that assault 
schools and school children uh, think that because it's a gun-free zone that they have uh, free entry and they can do whatever they want when they get in there. They need to know that that's not true, that they can be taken down quickly and efficiently. And I think that's what should happen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Connor. Mr. Charles Hickman. And again, school board's role in safety and security. Well, the school, role, school board has a, has a role in that because the school board sets um, school policy. So that's one of the things you, they would cover. You, you would have a policy. Um, as far as safety and security, it is correct that we'll know more after the sheriff's race as far as their role in this or not. But that's not the end all thing. Um, one of my military roles was as a physical security inspector. It's, it's not rocket science. You need to control your entry exit points and, and everybody, every school should have a, um, a plan regarding that. And I would push for that for an intricate plan that everybody exercised and, 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 and had like a fire drill and all that. And it became second nature. Uh, as far as the, <laughs> the, uh, the stuff about the armed teachers and all, I, I would not advocate all your teachers having it. I've been a certified teacher, and, and some of my associates would not be good candidates, but act, actually some would. Uh, somebody like, like me, for example, who has a military background, some people with police backgrounds, they might, that might be a consideration worth thinking about. Thank you, Mr. Hickman. We're going to move to our second question for our school board candidates, and we're going to start with Mr. John McCava, then we'll go to Charles Hickman, and then Mr. Donna Shreve. And while you're making your way to the podium, I'll read the second question. What is the single most important issue facing the school board, and how would you address it? What is the single most important issue facing the school board, and how would you address it? Well, I've spent a considerable amount of time volunteering in the schools in my district. Uh, my experience has been that the students uh, tend to be uh, disrespectful and undisciplined. And I don't like to say that. I do not like to say that, but it's the truth. I've substituted long-term sub. I've been a volunteer in uh, a couple of different programs in the county. And I see that as an overriding factor, and I'll tell you why. Because if a student doesn't have self-discipline, you can't teach them anything. That's from my personal experience after having taught literally thousands of students over 38 years in public education. The other thing is, if the students don't have any respect for themselves, don't expect them to respect you. They're not going to respect you, all right? So they need to have, we need to find a way to get students to respect themselves and discipline themselves. That is the easiest kind of discipline. I used to tell students there are two things I can do for discipline, external or internal. And external discipline means I discipline you, or internal discipline means that you will discipline yourself and I don't have to deal with you. So that's how I feel about it. Uh, <clears throat> I would say that uh, beyond that, uh, you think the primary thing we need to do is make sure, ensure that students have success in something. We need to have a broad-based curriculum where students can find something in the curriculum that they can succeed at. If they're successful, they, that will engender self-respect and self-discipline, and the teacher's job is much, much easier. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Lacava. <laughs> Mr. Hickman? Again, the question is, what is the single most important issue facing the school board, and how would you address it? Well, I believe we have a, a lot of issues, but if I had to pick a single issue, I, get, I think I would pick the, the uh, school proficiency uh, scores. A, a lot of our schools, 
or under 50% proficient in math and reading, including Snowden in my district. Uh, we've got a problem when our high school graduates go to get a job and they can't read a ruler. That's, um, that's a problem. Um, so we, that's got to, that's got, to me, that's got to be the, the number one mission that we go after. And there's some, some in close second. Thank you, Mr. Hickman. We are now going to start our closing statements. Each candidate will have, what, what? Oh gosh, I'm sorry, Mr. Shreve. I had checked you off already. I'll we now it. have candidate Donald Shreve with the question, what is the single most important issue facing the school board and how would you address it? And I did want to answer that. Yeah. I agree with Charles. I believe the most, um, I think it's close. I think the grade scores are the most important, but with a close second is safety in our schools. Um, eight, eight of our schools, this is a recent, uh, recent statistic data from the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. Eight out of our, our, our schools in this district, not in my district, but the whole district, eight are and I wrote it down today, eight schools have a D rating in school scores. We need to do better for our students. Students need to be prepared when they leave college. They need to, or rather when they, excuse me, leave high school, they need to go to college and then they need to prepare for a career. How can we do that when we're putting out our students that are making D averages? So we, we, we need a change. We need a change in our, way of thinking. One thing that, that I would recommend is, uh, as far as the curriculums go, to get back to the basics. Reading, writing, math, English, and social studies. We should be doing that. Thank you. And also, the school board contracts out there, uh, I think, most of their curriculums. I would like for the school board to to, con or to have our own curriculum where we're appointing a, a, a school board member, a teacher, uh, possibly a student on there, and other professionals that we want to hire, and then determine what we want as far as teaching our children. Uh, she's holding the flag up. That's distracting. But um, and teaching our children. <laughs> In teaching our children what they need, we, we need to be mindful of that, and we need to work hard, and I believe we can do it if... if Thank you, Mr. Shreve. Thank you. <laughs> now we're going to begin our closing statements, and I apologize for getting that mixed up, and we're going to start right back over with the original order. We're going to do Mr. Hickman, Mr. Shreve, and Mr. Lacava. So, Mr. Hickman. You have two minutes for an opening statement. Well, closing it, statement. Jeez. Sorry, am I opening or closing? You're closing. Okay. <laughs> okay. In closing, building maintenance and student attendance is important, but all of that is for nothing if our students are at less than 50% grade level proficient. Sadly, the state DPI reports show that that is the case in Bover County. We have eight schools in the county that receive a D grade, and one of the schools in District 2, my district, gets a D in reading and an F in math. I will be a voice for parents. I strongly believe that communication with parents is critical to success in education. We need to listen to parents, and we should welcome their help. I will work to keep divisive dogmas like critical race theory that make everything about race out of our schools. Instead, we should follow Dr. King's vision that people should be judged by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. Also, we do not need to confuse young children with radical gender ideology. We need an academic environment conducive to learning, not divisive social engineering. Children should learn how to think, not what to think. If we keep doing the same things with the same people, 
when we keep getting the same results, we can do better. I want to be a voice for you and for this community. A vote for Charles Hickman is a vote for all of that. That is my promise. Thank you, Mr. Hickman. Mr. Dial Shreve, candidate for school board, District 8. Okay, I believe that you need to elect someone to the Board of Education who believes in a strong work ethic and can communicate and work with fellow board members in order to gain the public's confidence in our schools again and by ensuring student success as they transition into college and career. That's what I meant to say a little bit ago. I'm, I met with families on the journey and learning for Board of Education in the last seven or eight months. One word I heard over and over again was that they wanted change when, um, I'm sorry, they wanted change in our current, current school board. They wanted change. They wanted to be heard and that their concerns were t are taken seriously. They were very concerned with student grades. In future elections, Families and the public in Beaufort County will continue to decide if they feel board members are not standing up for them and will vote for changes just like this election. I ask for your vote on November the 8th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shreve. And Mr. John McCava, two minutes for your closing statement. Candidate for District 8. To finish what I started to say, there is a hierarchy of top-down control that has to cease. Local citizens, school administrators, and teachers must work together to revitalize local public education. <clears throat> this is a democracy. This is democracy in action. Show up and speak up. For those of you who are proponents of only the three R's, I would suggest that your interpretation of education is too narrow. There are many more things in the history of the universe that need exposure. The ancient Greeks taught three subjects to their children, the arts, gymnasium, and logic. And if you want to uh, take that concept to the modern day, they're talking about mod body, mind, and spirit. We're not doing very well by children's bodies these days across the country. We are not doing a great job with their minds. They are being propagandized rather than taught. They are not getting a classical education. And the other thing is, we need to be able to defend ourselves as a country. And as we stand now, we can't afford to be weak, out of shape, and overindulged. We do little to provide students with real life experiences. Students need to get out of the classroom and see the necessity for learning. It's difficult for students to see the connection between the classroom and the real world. This kind of exposure spurs the creative and imaginative mind, and this leads to success. And that is a big thing, and I mentioned it before, that students need. Every student needs to experience success in something. <clears throat> the child is under attack and we need to stand in the door. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Nakama. I'd like to thank all three of our um, school board candidates that are here tonight. We really appreciate you coming and sharing your vision with um, all the folks here. So that completes our school board segment. So now we're going to ask if our county commissioner candidates will come up on stage. The format will be the same. Each will have a two-minute opening statement. We're going to have questions with two-minute responses and a two-minute closing statement. There will be two questions. And we have four candidates for county commissioner. Mr. Tandy Dunn was unable to be with us today, and I'm going to read his statement that he submitted um, to us for me to read. 
Tandy Dunn was unable to be with us tonight as he is out of town on a business trip that was scheduled last February. He wants you to know this. For over 40 years, he has served his community as a firefighter, EMT, and law enforcement officer. Tandy wants to continue his service as your next county commissioner. If elected, Tandy will work towards getting our deputies back into the schools, cut wasteful spending, and reduce your taxes. Equal services for the entire county will be a focus and we need to get our recycling program back up. Tandy says we do not need a new jail. In the past two years, we've spent $2 million in repairs and upgrades. The jail continues to pass all inspections. If anything, we should just expand within the basement, but for no reason should we build a new facility. Tandy is a disabled veteran of the United States Air Force. Currently, he is the Director of Health, Safety, and Environmental Affairs with Coastal Agribusiness. In his capacity, Tandy has dealt with many government agencies and their regulations. Tandy budgets, manages a budget, um, reads and understands contracts, plans for future issues, develops policies and procedures. Good jobs and good education are important for growth in Beaufort County. This year, there are four candidates running for county commissioner. You can only vote for one. Make your vote count. Vote Tandy Dunn for county commissioner. So now we will move to our candidates that are currently on stage. And we're going to start with Mr. Ed Booth with his opening statements. Mr. Booth, you have two minutes. Good afternoon. My name is Ed, Edwin Booth, better known as Ed Booth. Grew up in Acre Station, graduated from Pantega High School, went to Beaufort Community College, uh, studied North Carolina Driver's License Academy, North Carolina Administrative Hearing Officer School, where I retired after 20 years of administrative hearings. Married to Ethel Booth for 49 years. <laughs> Lover, have four children, three grandchildren. I'm asking, I'm asking you, I'm to asking you today, just to listen at the questions that are being asked and listen at the response. I'm not here to sugarcoat anything. I'm not here to let you know who I ain't. I'm here to let you know who I am. And that's what I would intend to do today. I appreciate the Chamber of Commerce and Washington Daily News for doing this forum. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you, Mr. Booth. Mr. Stan Bethridge. Mr. Dethridge, you have two minutes for an opening statement. Likewise, I'll try to be as brief as Ed. Thank you, Ed. Everybody loves a politician that doesn't talk too much. Uh, thank you, Washington Daily News. Uh, Chamber of Commerce for having us tonight. I think any time when you can have a forum when folks can come together, meet the candidates firsthand, see what they say, look them in the eye, and hear what they have to say, and hopefully these candidates will be honest with you. That's a good thing, and I thank you all for coming tonight. Um, I've been a county commissioner going on 22 years. This is the seventh term I seek. I've been in the Republican Party 31 years. The whole time I've either worked for some other candidates or worked for myself and other candidates at the same time. It's because I believe the Republican Party has promise, and that promise sometimes is wavered. Sometimes it does not meet the objective that some of us wish it would. But what we need to do is we need to protect the unborn. We need to make government smaller, more responsive, more nimble, so that we can all live in a society where our voices are heard and bureaucracy and those that are elite do not set the stage for everyone else. Right now in America, we have a problem. We have a problem where socialism is taking over. And when that happens, if you look at the communist model, you'll have the elites at the top and you'll have the serfs at the bottom. We already see right now the, the middle class being hollowed out. It's happening right before our eyes. It's happening in Beaufort County. It's an ongoing thing. I will promise to you three things I will do as a commissioner. I've done it before. I will do it again. We have, I will perform vigilant oversight. I will enact wise policy. And whenever possible, I will budget as prudently as possible so your taxes will not go up and will go down whenever possible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dethridge. Our next candidate is Mr. Frankie Waters. Thank you, uh, Kelly. I grew up in Beaufort County, 
Went to high school at Pine Town, went to school at Bath. Both of those schools are closed today. I don't know whether that was because I was there or not. I went on to uh, NC State University and got a degree in agriculture economics. Spent the next 30 years in the banking uh, business. Uh, the first job was with the Farm Credit Banks in Columbia, South Carolina, which was part of a nationwide uh, bank. And then uh, transferred back here uh, and got a job with uh, Wachovia, which is now Wells Fargo. Uh, got transferred up to Chesapeake, Virginia. Couldn't convince my wife to move in up there. Uh, so I said, you know, I'll stay up there during the weekend, come home on the weekend. And occasionally she would come see me. My background is in business. I am pro-business. I believe in partnerships. And thank God we've got Representative Keith Kidwell now in Raleigh that has brought 20 some million dollars back to this county. It's been a long time since we've had that help. I am, I'm very passionate about the public safety. When I was elected in 2014, one of the things that I tried to do was increase the, uh, the sheriff's office budget. And I still try to do that. In the last budget, we increased by two deputies. I live just about as far north in the county as you can get. Our problems are different than they are here in the city of Washington. Well, this is not in the city of Washington. And it's the same thing as it is down in Aurora and Blunt's Creek. It's all about you dialing 911 and you getting the best results. And that's from law enforcement and that's from EMS. My second passion is EMS. Ron Bozio and I started in 2015. And Thank you, Mr. Wars. <laughs> Okay, we're going to move to our question portion of our county commissioner forum. Our first question is going to, we're going to rotate around to Mr. Stan Etheridge first, then we'll go to Mr. Waters and followed by Mr. Booth. And our first question for the county commissioners is, what approach should the county take when it comes to economic development and job creation? So what approach should the county take when it comes to economic development and job creation? Mr. Detheridge, you have two minutes. Okay. This may seem like a simple question, but it's not. It's a complicated one. It's a question where you're, you're, you have to ask yourself as an elected leader, do I believe in socialism or do I believe in real economic development? I say that, that sounds crazy that you include business with socialism, but if you start taking from one, the taxpayer, to give to another, people coming into this area, asking for benefits, they get it from the state, some from the federal government, they get it from us here locally. If that is taking from one to give to the other. Now, while it is prudent to do some economic development to express who you are, to expose your county, it is bad governance to keep taxes high in order to benefit those that come into this county and, and, and they receive the benefits that people that are already here and, and, and working hard to produce will have to give up. That is, their fortunes and sometimes the competition of dealing with someone new coming into the area. Now, how do, how do you counter that? The best thing any county can do is to have streamlined government, lower taxes, have good schools. I like hearing these school board candidates. You did a great job tonight, all of you. Have better schools because our education is suffering. It's so hard to find smart kids these days. Now, they, they are not being educated. They are being indoctrinated. So there's so many things you can do. Be, leader, be leaders. Provide a society where uh, it's merit-based, where we can all benefit, and when we all win, we will win economically. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Deathridge. We'll have Mr. Frankie Waters. Mr. Waters, you have two minutes. On Thank you. Approach, uh, did you need the question? No, I, I've you got, got it. it. Uh, I've got it. Uh, this is probably the second most passionate thing that, that I have. 
Uh, we had a seminar put on by East Carolina University at Warren Airfield, and I'm not sure whether it was a year ago or a year and a half in the day. All of the commissioners were invited to go. I was there, Ed Booth was there, and John Rebels were there. So that should give you some indication of how some people feel about economic development. It's about location, it's about skilled labor, and it's about the money. We compete with all the surrounding counties and we compete with all the other states. So if you want to be a player, it means you have to give tax incentives. It means you have to maybe sometimes put money in it. For example, we have $4 million that we set aside for expansion of broadband in Beaufort County. It did not go to Tri-County Telephone as some people have put the word out there. I used to be the president of Tri-County. $4 million is there. And it's for anybody that's an internet provider. We've had the first grant, and the county's putting in 500,000. That will add fiber to 2,000 homes and businesses. You have to be part of it. This bit about it's socialism if you do it. You know, that might have been true 50 years ago, but I tell you, if you want to be, if you want to be in the forefront, you have to do something. You've got to be a partner with the state of North Carolina or with somebody or you get left behind. Ladies and gentlemen, our population decreased 3,000 over the last census. We've got to do something about it and jobs are there. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Orders. Mr. Booth, what a approach should the county take when it comes to economic development and job creation? As Commissioner Wilder stated years ago, creating jobs was a county thing. NASA Global. And if you don't invest, if you want to stay on little island by yourself and don't invest and compete with other counties, then that's what you're going to get, nothing. Some people call it socialism. I call it a vision. And if you don't vision bringing jobs to this county, uh, we, we are losing population. And the jobs that, and the reason that we are here and we're losing population is our kids are leaving to find better jobs. Some of them want those jobs that have internet. I am a firm believer in investing in economic development. If you got to have some kind of skin in the game, you can't compete with the triad. You can't compete with Wake County, and now over in Randolph County. One of my colleagues told me the other day, is fried doesn't matter matter fact. They have just got 1,500 jobs. Can you imagine how long it's been since we have had 1,500 jobs to come to Beaufort County? That's been a long time, if not never. And those are the kind of things that we've got to do. We've got to stop talking about socialism and giving this. It's not giving. It's investing in your future. And that's the only way that you're going to ever, ever compete in the job market today. That is the only way. Most people stand around and talk about you socialism, but they're grabbing at the same dollars that you're giving to bring jobs to the, this county. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Booth. We're going to move to our second question. And we will start with Mr. Frankie Waters and then Mr. Booth and Mr. Dethridge. And the second question is, what one part of the county government would you would receive more attention if you were elected and why? What one part of county government would receive more attention if you were elected and why? Wow. You know, when you when you go through the budget process, you sat there, we start in January and we finish up in June. And we listen to department heads, and they tell us what they need. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it, it's, it, it's hard to say how much money you want to spend. It, it all comes back to passions, the passion that an individual commissioner has as you sit around the table. If you sit around the table, you, or you, if you're there and you listen, 
here again, I'm very passionate about public safety, very passionate about economic development. So that's, that's where I try to add, add to. Uh, I've been accused of being a big spender. I've been accused of being somebody that raises taxes. I've been a commissioner for eight years. I have raised the taxes three times. One time it was to add school resource officers and that was two pennies. One time I raised the taxes one penny and that was to set aside money into a maintenance fund. Ladies and gentlemen, when I got to be a commissioner, we had a 911 center that had to have blue tarps in it to cover up the equipment during a hurricane. That's embarrassing. We had roofs that were leaking. Maintenance, uh, capital expenditure, right now I would say the number one thing is that we're facing is solid waste. We talk about recycling. Recycling, the amount of tonnage that goes to recycling before we stopped it was only 1%. Recycling is good in the, in the proposed mega sites, which we're moving along on, we'll be able to do recycling. We cannot do it with our present set. Thank you, Mr. Wars. Mr. Booth, what one part of county government would receive more attention if you were elected and why? Probably, I would say our employees. And you know, that right quiet when I said that. But it, without them, we couldn't do anything. My second would be our education. My third would be public safety. I think we should have a strong, strong public safety. But I also, and as much as I think that we need to have a strong, strong school system. Our children are our tomorrows, whether we need Believe it or not, we got to invest in our kids. And there's a lot of things that we need in Beaufort County. Yes, Commissioner Willis was correct. There was leakage in the building. And we need to do some things to, to better our buildings. But regardless of what you do, none of that will, do, will be what you need to have done if you don't understand that you got to work together with different entities, different municipalities, and make things go better. And of all things, make sure, make sure that we have a strong education and a medical center in this county. Thank you, Mr. Booth. And Mr. Booth, I'm going to call you back up for our closing statements. When that, uh, doggone it, I've done it again. I keep checking it off. I'm sorry. I know. It's a pattern. All you people in Bath look for. <laughs> I do apologize to both y'all. I'm trying to, to check off. I am blushing. <laughs> so two minutes. Okay, two minutes. Uh, okay. I think uh, one thing became a number of things for these other commissioners. I may go past one myself. Um, I think uh, we've, it's already been determined what my passion is for government, limited government, smaller government. We see on the national level the religion of climate change taking an issue that is very important to all of us, and that's preserving this planet for future generations, including ourselves. And they're making it into a religion, and you gotta be either for it or you're against it. I'm saying there's a middle ground. That middle ground is that we all take personal responsibility and we do what we can do in our homes and at the local level to make our, our local community better, safer, uh, make our planet better, more, more uh, productive. And if you, we do that, we'll be better off. There's three things we can do locally. We can grow more, more stuff, trees, bushes, vegetables. We eat the vegetables. That will uh, increase more carbon, uh, uh, oxygen from the carbon dioxide that's in the air. Uh, we can keep plastic out of the ocean. We have to take a, a real firm stance on that, and that means recycling everything. Spend the money. That's a very small amount of money to spend. It will start paying uh, dividends for us once that uh, uh, the markets change and uh, the product that we recycle will be valuable again. But we have to take that approach now. And here at the local level, where we have hands-on the materials we all use, this huge garbage dumps, we can reduce those. I'm passionate about that. That's something you can do. And solid waste is one of the big issues that governments do. 
think my time's almost up, so I think I'll sit down on this. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Deathridge. Now we'll start again. Mr. Booth, would you like two minutes for your closing statement? Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> I do apologize about you're that. Good job. I'm trying to get the rotations for you. Don't even blush and none of that. You're doing a good job. <laughs> As I first stated, I am Ed Booth. And when I say I'm Ed Booth, I am who I am. I wouldn't stand here today and tell you who I wasn't. I'm a Democrat, but I have never asked a person that I have been counted with whether you are a Democrat or a Republican. I'm going to do what I think is best for the people. I don't care who else feel differently than I do. And I'm asking you to vote for me. I have been here a while for 16 years. And not in those 16 years, you can't hear one bad thing that Ed Booth done. And I ask you to give me the opportunity again. And I promise you, I promise you, I will serve you with dignity and respect. I don't care whether you're a Republican a Democrat. I don't care whether you are black or white. I don't care whether you are rich or poor. I promise you, you get the same attention from me as everybody else does. I will give you my undivided attention. You are important to me because you are a citizen of this county and I ask for your vote. I'll start on October the 20th. I wish you could vote every day, but if you don't make it doing early voting, please do it on November the 8th. I beg you, I beg you for your vote. I don't take it for granted. I'm asking for it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Booth. <laughs> Mr. Stan Dethridge. Um, at the risk of being a one-note commissioner candidate, I'm going to express the one thing that I think you need, the one thing that I have committed to over 22 years, and the one thing that I will continue to do if elected. And I appreciate if you will vote this way. You're, what you see is what you get. What I say is what you get. Honesty is the only thing I know to give you. And I've, I've done that for 22 years. Number one, government has to be controlled. It has to be managed. It has to be watched. And budgets have to be thoroughly investigated. And then, and only then, if we do all those things, we commissioners do what we were elected to do and perform the oversight that's needed to keep your government smaller, more nimble, more responsive to your needs. Do what's really important. Yeah, I do talk about socialism. God bless you for bringing that up. Thank you. There's a difference between us. And socialism is when we start asking government to do everything for us rather than us taking personal responsibility, not only for our com communities, but for our nation. If we're good citizens here, as all government is local, all politics are local, we will benefit in North Carolina and our nation will benefit as well. So I'm asking you to vote for me. This is a representative republic. And if you look inside yourself, you're better angels, and you say, what can I do to help my area, my state, my nation? You will consider me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Deathridge. Mr. Frankie Waters. When Kathy and I were coming up here tonight, these other kids just, okay. We were riding up here tonight, I said, I said, you know, the best thing that could happen tonight would be for me to be the clean up hitter. And thank goodness that's the case. I'm asking you for a vote. And I also want to take this time to clear up a few things. And I'm going to go to my notes here. There are a lot of banners around this county. Some of them are in the Bellhaven Pantega area, Bath, some of them are in Washington. First thing I want to clear up is I did not close the Punga District Hospital. I never had the keys. What was the comment? You surprised me. Okay. I'm not finished yet. Okay, there's one that says that the budget increased $10 million. Ladies and gentlemen, the figure is $5.8 million. Is it, can you? Mr. Can you Waters, we stop the clock for a second. We, it does, it's a form and we're asking for a statement, so we need to, to cut out the back and forth. Yes, sir. I mean, 
Okay. The free tuition. We're at Beaufort County Community College. The Board of Commissioners approved a $1 million package over a four-year period, $250,000 a year. And in order for a Beaufort County student to qualify, they have to be a U.S. citizen, they have to reside in Beaufort County, and they also have to take a minimum of nine hours. What you, if, Commissioner uh, Deathridge picked up on my comment the other night at the Attorney's Theater. What you see is what you get. I do not owe anything to the conservative arm of the Beaufort County Republican Party. Never taken any money from them, never will. I'm very independent in my thinking, and you can rest assured, I'm looking for the future for my son, my daughter-in-law, and my three grandchildren, and for everyone that's in this room. I appreciate you. Thank guys. you, Mr. Waters. That concludes our county commissioner segment, so we're going to ask the sheriff candidates to the stage, and thank you, all three of you, for spending some time with us this evening. And Corey, if you want to stop at the podium, you can do that. We're going to do the same type of form or, or format as the segments prior to. We're going to have a two-minute opening statement, and we're going to start with Mr. Corey Rogerson. Good evening. Uh, thank you all for hosting this. Thank you all for having me here. Uh, my name is Corey Rogerson. I'm running for sheriff here in Buffett County. I was born and raised right here in Washington, North Carolina, on a farm out on Horton Station Road. Uh, I've spent my whole life here. I currently live in Chocolate with my wife and my four-year-old son. I do want to take some time to thank her. We have been going at this for 15 months now, and it's been non-stop, and, and she's held down the fort at the house with a, with a little one, so I, I do want to thank her for that. I'm a quick learner. Time's short, so I'm going to jump right into uh, what I want to bring here to this county. Uh, we got a serious staffing issue. Uh, very serious staffing at, at the sheriff's office. We're short about 14 or 15 people right now. We have to go out and recruit and recruit hard to, to bring uh, some deputies in here and then retain them. Uh, there's no doubt about it. 100% I want to bring our deputies back into our schools as SROs. Um, I, I've seen it firsthand. I got a little one that's getting ready to start school. I want him to have the best protection that he can possibly have. And, and I believe that's fully at the sheriff's office. You get the whole umbrella of the sheriff's office. Uh, you get the administration, you get investigations, you get narcotics, you get patrol, you get communications, you get all of it. Uh, we got a drug problem and, and we got to continue to fight it and fight it hard. Uh, I'd love to look at expanding our narcotics unit at the sheriff's office. Uh, that way we can continue to fight this problem. They're, they're coming in from everywhere. Other counties are pushing drugs out of ways and we got to fight back and, and, and try to eliminate this drug problem that we have out here. Uh, I'm very big or on community involvement. Uh, I think we need to be out there involved with our community, attending events and also hosting events. Uh, I think the Sheriff's Office can put on some events to bring our citizens in. Uh, that way we can get some questions answered, ask some questions, and, and have a good relationship moving forward. Uh, I look forward to answering the next few questions over the next few minutes. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Rogerson. Our next candidate is Mr. Scott Hammonds. Hey, good evening. Thank you for the invitation. My name is Scott Hammonds, and I want to tell you my 32 years of experience of protect and serve has been my background. I take it very seriously. I've been a veteran of numerous deployments at management and leadership position, uh, not just here in the United States, but abroad in very serious conditions. So my management to bring leadership to a, a uniform group and bring, uh, bring the togetherness, bring training, is very, very important to me. Uh, tolerance. My tolerance for training is very high. I've had many, many hundreds of hours of training. And I believe what we're missing is the opportunity to get training in de-escalation and, and other items that are important to me as a leader. As a veteran of the Highway Patrol as a manager of troopers, we understand what enforcing the laws, enforcing them fairly, enforcing them uniformly. I take pride in that. 
I've been talking to deputies and their leaderships and around our bordering counties and what they take pride is, is how these drug enforcement guys work well with the bordering counties. We must take this continuous and take it serious to reduce crime here, reduce the drug usage, reduce the drugs from coming into our county, and I will unify with the other sheriffs here to keep pushing these drugs further and further away from Beaufort County. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hammonds? We're going to rotate y'all around on who answers first on these questions, and we're going to ask you the first question first. Okay. And that question is, how do you view the sheriff's responsibility for working with local schools? So how do you view the sheriff's responsibility for working with local schools? You have two minutes, Mr. Hammonds. The sheriff's responsibility to schools will be the same as responding to any event anywhere in any other category, whether it be a bank robber or anything. We're coming to secure and protect. The current status is we do not have deputies within the school to be a interaction with our students and our student body. I take that as a deficit. I believe our deputies create a foundation or a, a beginning, a start of orientating themselves with the children so they can gain trust, so they can educate them, so they can be mentors. And that's the component we're missing with deputies directly in the school. The security of the chef himself, I will always be as a certified uh, manager in physical security as a planning operations uh, first sergeant in the Army National Guard, I had the experience to go in and look at those schools, create an assessment on, on each property, which is very much uh, spoken of earlier, which is very much a needed product. Each school has its own unique footprint. Each school has its own unique signature of what security it needs. One school don't necessarily need one deputy. One school don't necessarily need two deputies. All of our schools, we need additional patrolling deputies who can respond from school to school. So there's a dynamic of what is safe and secure, and I have that specialty to bring that to the table, to bring security to the schools. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hammonds. And Mr. Rogerson, we're going to give you that question, and then you can remain at the podium for the second question, OK? okay? So the question is, how do you view the sheriff's responsibility for working with local schools? Uh, obviously, safety is the, the first and, and main concern at our schools. Uh, and like I just mentioned before, it, it starts by, by getting our deputies back into our schools. I can't sit up here and tell you that that is 100% going to happen, but what I can tell you is that I will 100% uh, work with the school board and our county commissioners to get our deputies back in there. I will do everything in my power to provide that safety and security at our schools. Uh, we owe that. Our kids are our future. If we're not investing in them, then, then we don't, we're not going to get a return from it. Uh, so we have to protect them at, at all costs. Uh, I, I firmly believe that is, that is with the sheriff's office uh, and our deputies being involved in our schools. Uh, not only is it best for safety and protection, but it also gives us opportunity to build our relationships with these kids and, and grow in our future with them. Uh, they look up to these deputies and our school resource officers that are in the school. Uh, starting off, uh, obviously there's a contract that we have with Allied. Uh, so starting off, we, we got to provide assistance with Allied uh, to, to beefing up the security at our schools. Uh, I'd love to, to provide some deputies considering staffing. Uh, that's our, our ultimate goal is to get our staffing up, uh, but provide some deputies to assist with Allied, uh, making sure that we have an armed security guard or armed deputy at, at every single school. Uh, that is valuable. It is important. Uh, it's, it's hard to protect somebody if somebody comes in there with a gun if you don't have one. Uh, radios has, has been an issue with, with Allied. Uh, they don't have a communication system. They, they talk to each other by phone, uh, and, and that is a safety concern. Uh, so we have to do what we can to, to get our deputies back in these schools, uh, but it starts by building relationships with our school board. Uh, from what I understand, they, they want to guarantee uh, that deputies will not be pulled out, out of the schools. That is the easiest guarantee that I can possibly give. They will be there from doors open to doors closed, uh, and we will provide the best security within the sheriff's office. Thank you. All right. Mr. Rogerson, you're going to take this question first keep you from having to walk right. across the stage so much. 
Okay, so the second question, which you will be answering first this time, is what is the biggest threat to public safety in Beaufort County and how would you address it? The biggest threat to public safety in Beaufort County. You have two minutes. The biggest threat to public safety is our staffing. I, I mentioned before we have 14 to 15 openings right now. We have to do everything we can to go out, recruit, and recruit hard. I started my career right here. I went to Billy T right here. I graduated on this stage. We have to come to these local community colleges and recruit from within. Uh, we are dealing with a different generation right now. They want to feel wanted, and we have to go out and recruit and make them feel wanted. Uh, we have to bring them in. And they, they're not knocking down the doors to get into law enforcement these days. When I pulled up in the parking lot, I saw our, our Billy T program uh, running outside. There was five people. You got a lot of agencies that are fighting over five cadets from Buffer County. Uh, so we got to do better about recruiting and recruiting hard uh, to get in here. So the, the biggest concern is our staffing. Uh, we have to increase our staff and we have to get back to full staff uh, or, or close to it. That is our biggest concern for our deputies. That is our biggest concern for our citizens. Uh, that will reduce our response times. Uh, it will it'll increase our responses to calls. Uh, right now we have four zones in this county. We have a deputy in each zone and, and a supervisor that kind of floats around a little bit. Uh, we got to increase that. We're allotted for seven deputies per shift right now, but we don't have a single shift that has more than five. Uh, that is an issue, and that is an issue that we have to fix. Uh, and that's by bringing, bringing more staff in and going out and recruiting and bringing them in. Uh, that way we can provide them on the streets to give us better safety uh, for our deputies and for our citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rogerson. Yeah, I'll repeat the question for you, and once you finish with your response, we'll leave you right there so you can start the closing statement. So the question is, what is the biggest threat to public safety in Beaufort County, and how would you address it? The biggest threat to public safety. Well, that's a multi-pronged thing. Answer because personnel, lack of personnel, definitely is our national issue, which trickles to our local sheriff's office the second part of that is the geographical footprint that we live in we're blessed with a beautiful county with the water that divides it but let's make sure that the river is the only thing that divides this county recruiting look i teach the greatest enjoyment about law enforcement if you are selected to be an instructor a trainer of people i've been a trainer I instruct here at both Community College. I teach cadets. I've been teaching here for many, many years. When I came through BLT here in 1992, there was 40 of us in basic law enforcement training. There's seven to 10 attending now at any given time that may graduate. And out of those seven to 10, all of them are not promised for Beaufort County Sheriff's Office or Washington PD or even in our jurisdiction. So our biggest threat nationally will be personnel until the attitude and the trust comes back to the leadership of our local law enforcement. If you, the community, don't have trust in me, when I come to you and tell you, your sheriff will come truth, no matter how you feel about Scott Hammonds, I will always come with the truth to you, and that is what makes our community safer. I believe I will be that uh, candidate, I'll be that sheriff, who will bring that trust, I'll bring you the truth. You may or may not like it. But I can't change the dynamics of that river. But I promise you I'll manage, I'll manage it to be a geographical, um, not to be a problem of staffing. If we got Bellhaven, we got patrols here in Washington, we've got to consider the patrols going Thank to you, Mr. Bellhaven. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. But we're going to roll right into your two-minute closing statement. So when you're ready to start, please start. Well, my closing statement is over there in my... <laughs> Wait, you wait. Is it over there? Go get it. You can go get it. I was just keeping y'all from having to go back and That's forth. Great. I should have been best on that. Look, I want to say thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. This is about the sixth, seventh uh, forum. And for it to be the most serious job in this county in my opinion to get one minute two minute here and there to tell you it is it's crazy but i just want to tell you 
I have campaigned for 18 months around this county to gain your trust. My concern is you. I got into this campaign because I had serious doubts about leadership in this county. Both for county came through. You had doubts about the leadership in this county. And I will say thank you for allowing me to come and represent both for county in the general election. I come for the last 18 months, I come with the truth. I come with the qualifications. I come with experience. You cannot excuse my 32 years of experience given back to this government or to this community. My 27 and a half years in law enforcement is, is been for, for myself and for this community. What I want to tell you is I want to hold town hall meetings in each of the communities in this county to get your voice back to the sheriff, to me. That is security. That is how we connect the community to the sheriff. Not to the deputies, not to the police, but to the sheriff who holds this, this uh, trust from community to the office. I work hard to gain trust with the community and the county commissioners, the school boards, to get our deputies back in the school, the SROs. I want to first I want to thank all the deputies that work for Boatford County. You're doing an outstanding job. Continue to strive through this process until this election. And you have my back when it comes time to stand before you, swearing you in. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mannes. Mr. Corey Waggerson, two minutes for a closing statement. We are facing a very critical election uh, for the future of this county, for the future of our sheriff's office. Um, my experience is, is every year that I've served, I, I did 10 at the Washington Police Department, I did two at the sheriff's office, uh, and now I'm currently at the hospital in Greenville. Uh, but my passion and my heart to serve is right here in Buffer County. That's where I want to come back to and, and serve for a long term. This isn't a short term goal for me, this is a long term goal. Uh, I plan on getting in the office and, and staying in the office. Hopefully you, you enjoy seeing me for a while. But all my experience has been right here in our local law enforcement agencies, and that is very important uh, when you're seeking an office in our local law enforcement agency. Uh, and that is, that is the big difference that, that sets me apart. Uh, I don't care what party affiliation you come from. I have not been bought. I can't be bought, and I will never be bought. Uh, I'm here to represent everybody in this room. I've never, not once in my career, went to arrest somebody and said, hey, are you a Republican or Democrat? It doesn't matter. I'm here to represent everybody equally and fairly across the board. Uh, I can't stand anything that creates division, and unfortunately, politics is, is one of the biggest division creators in this country. Uh, I stand firm on what I believe in. I stand firm on my stances. Nobody represents me but me. Uh, and that's what I can promise you moving forward uh, as a leader as a, a representative of this county, I will work hard to make Buffett County a safer place for you to live, uh, regardless of what walk of life that you come from. I appreciate everybody's support that I've received so far. If you have any questions that have not been answered up to now, please feel free to reach out. An informed voter is the best voter, and I look forward to seeing everybody. Vote for Corey Rogerson, November 8th. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Rogerson. Thank you to both our sheriff's candidates and all the candidates that have um, spent some time with here, with us here tonight. And I'd also like to again thank the Chamber and the Washington Daily News. It is a privilege to be a part of this forum every year. And before we um, close for the evening, there was a few minor things I'd like to go over. They're not really minor, but just know that one stop begins this Thursday, October 20th at the Board of Elections office and in the Chuck Winnity Fire Department. So it starts at 8 a.m. this coming Thursday. We're open 8 a.m. to 7.30. Satellite sites will open in Aurora and Bellhaven, but they will only operate the last four days of one stop. The last day to request a, ba a mail ballot is the Tuesday prior to the election, which is November 1st. One stop will end the Saturday before the election at 3 p.m. And after that date, you must um, report to your designated precinct on election day, and polls are open from 6.30 to um, 7.30 p.m. So 
All the candidates are over here. Thank you again for everybody coming out tonight and again to the Chamber and the Washington Daily News. And everyone have a great evening.